Okay, welcome to the 3D Modeling a Guitar Fretboard using Parametric Equations tutorial. Uh, in order to complete this tutorial, you are going to need uh, some type of CAD drawing system. So for example, this could be something like AutoCAD, Inventor, Fusion 360, SolidWorks Pro E, etc, etc, any type of 3D modeling software that allows for parametric equations. Uh, if you are not aware, parametric equations um, is a way where you can use mathematical equations when adding dimensions into a 3D model. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a sketch, and you can choose whichever plane you like to do this. I enjoy doing this on the top since that's where we'll be making it. And we are going to start off by making a sample size fretboard, which we want to be two and a half inches wide by 25 and one half inches long. So you're going to want that rectangle. Um, obviously, if you do this with the line tool, make sure all corners come to uh, meet at perpendicular 90 degree angles so they are square. Uh, you will notice the equation for creating uh, the fret spaces uh, is the same as the module you did on fret spacing earlier. And we are going to use that equation now as we begin to type in our equations. First thing I like to do is I'm going to use my line tool to draw the first fret. We're going to say that the top of the rectangle here uh, represents the nut of the guitar, so where the strings start after they go from the tuners. And we're going to sketch that out, and now I'm going to use my dimension tool to dimension from the nut to what is the first fret. I'm going to click just to add the dimension now, and we're going to hit enter. And in order to actually enter the parametric equation that we need here for the first fret, we need to know the reference of this length right here. This number is representing our scale length of the overall instrument. I'm going to hover over that, and for me it's showing that the representation is D1, standing for dimension 1. You can also double click on that and it may tell you uh, there that will differ between programs. So D1 is going to be referenced in our equation. So if we look at the module, we notice here is our equation for fret spacing, uh, where x is our distance to the fret from the nut, uh, n is for the fret number that we are working on, l is our scale length, and then our r right here to the nth uh, is a number that I already have calculated out for you, and you'll see in just a second. So back at my 3D model, I'm going to double click on my dimension. And this is what I have found to work in Fusion 360 and Autodesk Inventor. The first number we're going to type in is D1. That's our sample dimension of our overall scale length. And we're going to say times. So I hit Shift 8 key for the multiplication. Okay, beginning parenthesis, we're going to say 1 minus, beginning parenthesis again, 1 divided by, begin parenthesis, 1.059463. This is going to be to the power of whatever our fret number is. So here I'm going to begin parenthesis. We're going to type in 1 because this is the first fret. And now we are within four, four parentheses. So I have to end parenthesis 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Now you can see the color of my equation changed to black, which means it's good to go. Uh, if I was missing one parenthesis and it's red, that means that something is wrong. That was something I had to troubleshoot uh, just how many parentheses to use throughout the equation. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And if I double check this measurement here of 1.431 on a already calculated chart of fret spacing, I will see that that is correct for an overall distance of 25 and a half. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this equation and I'm going to control C copy it and we're going to go ahead and draw in what will be our second fret and I'm going to dimension that oops, from the nut and this time I'm going to try to keep these organized. I'm going to copy and paste and instead of to the power of 1 at the end, I just have to change that to 2 because we're now on the second fret. I hit enter and that has automatically 
moved. I'm going to continue adding more lines that will represent fret, different fret numbers. And one thing I want to keep in mind as I'm adding this is I want to make sure that here these lines are meeting the side of the rectangle uh, at 90 degrees. So you should get a perpendicular constraint there. If you're not seeing that, you can always add one uh, over here within your geometric constraints. So now I'm going to continue to dimension all of these as I create them and just hitting paste and changing the overall fret number. And this would be a great spot for you to pause the video and create all of your own frets. I like to draw the lines and then add the equation as I go. Okay, now I've added 22 total lines. I have 21 of them dimensioned out for frets because that's our typical stem guitar fretboard with 21 frets. And some people could leave this one. I'm going to suggest that you dimension it from the previous fret so that in case you change your scale length, uh, it can change with however you change it. And I'm just going to give that an extra 3 eighths of an inch. So in case I want to use that to CNC later on, I've got some extra room there that I can trim down or adjust as needed. Uh, from here, your fretboard is just about ready to be CNC'd. I would suggest uh, during your hard work that you make sure that you save it in case something terrible would happen. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to actually test your equations to see if they will move when you change the overall scale length. So let's say I've decided that I want to make a bass guitar, and our typical bass guitar scale length is 34 inches. If I change that one measurement, I should be able to see that all of these have changed as well, and I can check each of them uh, with a sample of a calculated fretboard. Perhaps that's something off of the Stu Mac website, Fret Calculator, which is a great resource. So I'm going to change that back to 25 and 1 half. And you'll see that when I change that back, it still keeps this last line, uh, the 22nd line after the 21st fret, uh, the same. So I don't have to move that again later. From here, what I want to do is now create the actual taper and shape of the fretboard. So we're going to add a line at the center point. And to do that, I can just use my mouse in my program. And that triangle represents the center point and I will also add that all the way down to here, my last line, and that should meet perpendicular. And I want to make sure that that's in the center uh, because otherwise as I cut the taper, it could uh, misalign things or things could move and I wouldn't want that to happen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating what is a typical nut width. And I like to do that by using lines. And and I'm going to go about it a different way where we're just going to draw two vertical lines and trim to them after they're dimensioned. So my typical nut width, in this case, I am going to use the measurement of 1 and 11 16 So if I don't know what the half of that is, I can actually type 1 and 11 16 okay, as one number, divided by 2 and it will give me that equation. And instead of having to retype that again, I can copy it and say I want a dimension from here to this point. And I would like that to be the same measurement. And there I have that. What's going to happen later on is I'm going to trim these. These are now just acting as marking points for me, uh, construction lines, if you will. I'll go down here. And at the end of my fretboard, uh, I've measured out an example guitar. And we are going to say that that measurement uh, for me is 2 and 7 30 seconds. So I'm going to go from that point to there. And I'm going to say 2 and 7 30 seconds divided by 2 is equal to that. Copy dimension once again. And there I have that. And again, I can trim off there to there because now I'm going to use my line tool to draw a line from the end of the fretboard 
up to this point on the nut where I marked my width and do the same thing on the opposite side. Uh, if I had wanted to do half of the fretboard and mirror it over the center line, I could have done that as well. And now I have my taper selected. I could use my trim tool to go through and trim off all the lines on the side if I wish. So here you can see that I have trimmed all of the excess lines around the fretboard. One line you want to make sure that you do not get rid of is the line representing the entire scale length since all of these fret equations are referencing this number here, the D1 in this instance. Uh, from here you're ready to take this drawing. Uh, you could get rid of the center line or keep it and take this to uh, the cam feature or uh, however it is that you prepare your G-code for a CNC machine and create your uh, new CNC fretboard. If you wanted to add your fret dots at the 3rd, 5, 7, 12th, etc., uh, you can do that as well here or add another intricate design. Have fun and enjoy making your own custom CNC fretboard. Thanks for watching.